Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation that has an irrational coefficient. Okay, so at this point, you can just go ahead and pause the video uh, and try the problem yourself first. Okay, now this is a cubic equation and to make it worse, it has an irrational coefficient. So we're not going to be looking for integer solutions. We're not going to look for factors that way. We're just going to use an in other method here. Okay, so what is the method we're going to use? We're not going to use the cubic formula either, but we're going to be using a very interesting method to solve this cubic equation. Okay, so since it has a root 2 or a multiple of root 2 in it, I'm just going to make an assumption here. Okay, so and my assumption is going to be like this. I'm going to assume that one of the roots needs to be in this form, a plus b root 2. Since all the coefficients besides the root 2 are integers, I'm just going to make an assumption that a, b are integers here, right? And our one of our roots is just going to be like this, okay? We don't know at this point if this equation has one real root or two real roots or three real roots. We don't know that yet, okay? How many complex roots it has, we have no idea. But first, we're going to try to find one of the solutions this way, and then we can proceed. All right. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. Uh, I'm going to replace x with a plus b root 2 here. So it's going to look like this, a plus b root 2 cubed plus 3 times the quantity a plus b root 2 plus 5 root 2 is equal to 0. Okay, and I'm just going to expand it. Now, there are so many ways to expand it. One of my favorite ways is... If you're expanding x plus y cubed, then I would like to write it as x cubed plus y cubed, which kind of puts the sum of two cubes together, plus 3xy multiplied by the quantity x plus y. Uh, obviously, this is equivalent to x plus y quantity cubed. You can verify that. So now it's going to look like a cubed plus b root 2 cubed plus 3 times a times b root 2 multiplied by a plus b root 2. Okay, that's going to be the cube of our uh, first term. Plus, and then I'm just going to distribute the 3 and then just add, add the 5 root 2 at the end. And this is equal to 0. Now, let's expand this a little bit more and see what happens. This is going to become a cubed. Now, how do you cube b root 2? Well, b cubed is just going to be b cubed, but if you cube root 2, you have to think about it as root 2 times root 2 times root 2, which is 2 root 2. So I can write it as 2b root 2, right? 2b cubed. I'm sorry, I forgot to cube the b. Okay, plus, now I'm going to distribute the a over this. So it's going to look like 3a squared b root 2 plus... So I have like a root 2 times root 2 here. That's going to make it 2. Multiply by 3, that's going to make it 6. I have an A, I have a B, and I have another B. So that's going to make a B squared. And there's no radical here because root 2 times root 2 is an integer. Okay? So we distributed the 3AB root 2. Now plus, I have a 3A plus 3B root 2 plus 5 root 2. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Okay, so my goal is to find the a and b values from this equation. But how do I do that, right? That's the critical part. Because if I can find the value of a and b, then I can actually find one of the roots of this equation if a and b turn out to be integers, of course. If they're not integers, they're rational numbers, that's fine too. But let's see what happens, okay? So what I'm going to do at this point is since all the radicals were simplified as much as possible, I'm going to put the non-radicals together and all the radicals I'm just going to factor. So I'm going to proceed as a cubed. And then the non-radical term is 6ab squared plus the 3a. And then I have no other non-radicals. So that's it. Plus, now let's go ahead and take a look at everything that contains root 2 in it. Which is going to be 2b cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3b plus 5. Okay, so I'm basically taking out a root 2 here and factor everything else. Okay, that thing is equal to 0. Now, if a and b are integers, even if they're not integers, let's say they're rationals, then in order for this equality to be true, 
which basically means that if x plus y root 2 is equal to 0 and x and y are rational numbers, then we have to have a certain condition here. Obviously, y needs to be 0 and x needs to be 0. Otherwise, you can't get, by adding these kinds of terms, you can't get a 0 because you have an irrational number here and x needs to be rational. By adding those two, you can't get a 0 unless y is 0. Obviously, y is x 0. Now, you, you can think about it. Well, if y has to be 0, then automatically x has to be 0, right? It's just implied. Okay, cool. Now, so this gives us two good results, one of which is this one has to be 0, the whole thing, and this one has to be 0. So you might be thinking, oh my god, this is like cubic equation, and it's a system, and there are two variables, and this looks complicated. Well, it kind of looks complicated, but if you kind of go deep down, you're going to find out that this is actually fairly easy. And the solution, the result we're going to get from here, you're probably going to recognize. Anyways, let me just proceed from here. In the first equation, so I'm going to go ahead and write this down as a system, so you can kind of look at it in a better way. So these are my equations. So that's kind of interesting because from one equation, we're actually getting two equations. So the relationship between rationals and irrationals is an interesting one. Okay, so we have a system of equations and we need to solve for A and B. Now, you might be thinking, okay, this looks complicated, but it actually isn't that complicated. If you focus on the first equation, uh, you'll, you're going to realize that you can actually factor out an A. Okay, and then you'll be getting A squared plus 6B squared plus 3 is equal to 0. Now, you might recognize the system before because I had shared this as a problem on Twitter. So if you kind of look back, uh, you'll see this. But at that one, I was just thinking about maybe I'll share this with everyone else, see how, what, how they solve it. Okay. And I also submitted the solution. So you can also look at that too. Now, in this equation, what do we know? Either A is 0 or the other factor is 0, right? So what happens if A is not 0? I mean, what if it's not, right? Then it, it's implied that A squared plus 6B squared plus 3 is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. A and B are integers. Now think about it. Even if A and B are not integers and they're rationals, A squared is a non-negative term. 6B squared is a non-negative term. You add them, you can never get negative 3. So this is impossible in the real world, let alone rationals or irrationals. This is impossible in the real world. So we, we don't get a solution from here, no solution, which means that A has to be zero. This is a must, okay? If A is a real number, then it needs to be zero. Cool. That helps us a lot, don't you think? In the second equation, I can just go ahead and substitute that. Look how easy that is. If A equals zero, then I get 2B cubed, plus 3b plus 5 is equal to 0. Awesome. Now, you might be thinking, oh, this is, again, a cubic equation. Well, as, not as bad as the first one. The first one had the radical in it. This one is all integers. Moreover, this is a factorable equation. Now, what is your first impression? When you see a cubic equation with integer coefficients, you first test the factor theorem, right? Like, what are divisors of 5? 1, 5, negative 1, and negative 5. There aren't that many. So I can just go ahead and test them out. Well, uh, if you test 1, obviously 2 plus 3 plus 5 is not equal to 0. That's not going to work. If you test um, b equals negative 1, then you're going to notice that this is negative 2. This is a negative 2. That's a negative 3, and that's a positive 5. Is that equal to 0? Yep, that's right. So b equals negative 1 actually works. But here's the question. Is b equals negative 1 the only solution? We have to find out, right? At, at least it's one of the solutions. So let's see. Now, how do you factor this once you know that b equals negative 1 is a factor? I mean, a solution? Well, you could just go ahead and divide this by b plus 1 by long division or synthetic. But they, those methods are really long. So there must be an easier way to do this, right? Well, there is. Okay, here's how. You can just go ahead and add and subtract some terms to make it in such a way that b equals negative 1 is going to be a factor. So you want to have a factor of b plus 1, obviously, but you kind of start off with 2b cubed, right? So if I multiply 
b squared by that, I would be getting 2b cubed plus 2b squared. So that would be nice if I had 2b squared here, right? But I don't have that. But no problem. I can just go ahead and add and subtract it, right? So that wouldn't matter if I did that. Cool. Now I get this equation. So this part is factorable nice. But what about this part? Well, we can just proceed by the same idea and say that, you know what? I'm just going to arrange this term. So what, wouldn't that be nice if I had a, um, well, I want a b plus 1, right? But I do want uh, to get negative 2b squared. So I'm looking at something like this, negative 2b squared minus o. Okay, that would be nice if I, if only I had a negative 2b there. But that can be arranged because if you subtract negative 2b or if you subtract 2b, then you can just add it, right? 2b. Now it's a 0. So this part is factorable. This part is factorable. Cool. But I have a 3b there. That's fine. You can just add it. 3b and then plus 5. Awesome. And this whole thing is equal to 0. Yeah, I know I kind of took too long here, but I'm just going to show you the general principle. This is a really cool principle to factor once you know one of the roots. Okay. So I'm going to plot a 2b squared. That's going to give me b plus 1. This shows that b equals negative 1 is going to be a solution here. Minus 2b, again, same story, b plus 1. Here, does that work? Okay, well, if you combine these two into 5b, then you can actually pull out a 5, and you'll get b plus 1, and happy ending, right? So everything has b plus 1 in it, which means we kind of did the polynomial division here without dividing. Okay, this means that I'm going to have b plus 1 as one of the factors, as we know. The other factor is going to be 2b squared minus 2b plus 5, and the whole thing is equal to 0. As you know, guys, b equals negative 1 is a valid solution. Let's look at the other solutions. Okay. Now, this one, first, I'm going to check the discriminant to see if there are any real solutions. b squared minus 4ac. Obviously, this is 4 minus 40 which is less than zero, no real solutions from here. Too bad, right? We don't get any real solutions from the quadratic, meaning that b equals negative one is the only valid solution, okay? Because we're looking for real solutions here. So that means that a equals zero and b equals negative one. That's our conclusion. But our assumption was that x is in this form, a plus b root two, meaning that x is equal to negative root 2, which is cool because we actually found an irrational solution without using the cubic formula, okay? So, now our original equation is what? x cubed plus 3x plus 5 root 2, right? x cubed plus 3x plus 5 root 2. And we now know that x equals negative 2 is one of the solutions. Now, at this point, you can either use the polynomial division or you can just proceed, you know, in a different way. So I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and do the long division here. We know that x equals negative root 2 is a solution. So x plus root 2 is a factor, right, by factor theorem. So I can just go ahead and divide by that, okay? And how do you divide it? Well, x plus root 2, you put it here. And then x cubed plus 3x plus 5 root 2 x goes into x cubed, x squared times. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the x squared, x cubed plus root 2x squared. Obviously, there's no x squared term here. So when I negate it and add it, I'm just going to end up with negative root 2x squared plus 3x. Now, x goes into negative root 2x squared, negative root 2x times. And I'm going to distribute that over this, negative root 2x squared minus, I hope this wasn't too fast, minus 2x. You see that? root 2x, negative root 2x my, times root 2 is negative 2x. And I'm going to negate that again to add the opposite. I mean, to, to, to subtract, I have to add the opposite. Yep, that was right. And then from here, I get 5x. And then if I bring down the 5 root 2, bingo, I got the answer because now x goes into 5x five times. And that's exact. If I go in and distribute the 5, I get 5x plus 5 root 2. And then from here, if I negate it and add, then I'll be getting zero as a remainder, meaning that factor theorem is telling the truth. Okay, so what does it mean then? Then that means my original equation, which is x cubed plus 3x plus 5 root 2, 
can be factored as x plus root 2 multiplied by x squared minus root 2x plus 5. Okay? So that's the way to factor it. And as you know, we found one of the solutions to be root 2. I mean, negative root 2 from here. We know that x equals negative root 2. That's one of the solutions, but this is cubic. Let's look for, look for the other solutions. So I'm going to go ahead and solve that quadratic, which should be easy with the formula. x is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 2, minus 4ac, which is 4 times 5, divided by 2a, which is 2. This is going to be root 2 plus minus 2 minus 20, which is negative 18. And I can write it as root 18i. So from, I'm going to be getting the complex solutions from here. So apparently this cubic equation only has one real solution and the other solutions are complex. And those solutions can be written in, I don't know if it's a simpler way, but root 18 can be written as 3 root 2, right? I divided by 2. Okay. Those are going to be the other solutions. And that's it for this problem. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like the video. And take care until the next time.